the environment in which a sculpture is placed should be given great consideration. One should think whether the sculpture works in that environment, uh, whether it harmonises uh, with the space and, uh, uh, and with the buildings and with the use that area gets. My husband, uh, Donald, had the idea of putting a statue of Mandela in Trafalgar Square. This is what he was wanting to do uh, a, a year or so before he died. When he saw that he was going to be too ill to do it, he asked uh, Lord Richard Attenborough to take it over. And uh, working with the GLA now, we have this uh, organisation called the Mandela Statue Fund, which is the driving force behind the, uh, the statue. Music and art have a very important part to play. And uh, Ian's contribution was he recognised and understood that and felt it in himself. And it moved him to devote his work to the celebration of those great events. <laughs> I think we should no longer be thinking of military options to, to straighten the world out. We should be using our, our, our influence and our statesmanship um, to, um, to direct the policy of the world in, 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 into a safer place. I pass by here and stand and watch people coming past this wonderful memorial and think that every time how lucky we have been to have had such a wonderful sculptor who has produced not only such a historical monument but artistically adds to the beauty of this London of ours. There are a number of lines engraved on that memorial. One of them by a great poet Cecil Day Lewis entitled The Volunteer. Tell them in England if they ask what brought us to these wars? To this plateau beneath the night's grave, manifold of stars. It was not fraud, nor foolishness, glory, revenge, or pay. We came because our open eyes could see no other way. Ian, who was a very politically committed artist, wanted to do a bust of me. So I went to his studio in Battersea. It was just a sort of exhibition of, of radical, progressive people. And it was an inspiration just to go there and see it. Uh, there were the busts of uh, models of them, of Trevor Huddleston, Phil Noel Baker, who was an extraordinary man who had a gold medal from the Olympics and also a Nobel Peace Prize. Nelson had been approached and said yes he would sit for this and so apparently he did sit for this but um, Ian said it was rather difficult because apparently he normally puts people on a kind of a turntable so he can move them around but Mandela has got some problems with his feet and, and lower legs and wanted to just sit in one place so Ian had to keep running around him all the time uh, which made his work a little bit harder um, also, I said to him, because, you know, Nelson is sitting there being very patient and, you know, what about his work, his daily work? And he said uh, people were coming in all the time and talking to him about things. So he wasn't sitting dead still. He was, you know, dealing with things, which apparently didn't distract Ian at all. I think Ian felt very privileged to be then doing it, actually. So when that goes to the foundry, a piece like that, they'll put wax paint wax into there, which sets hard, like um, similar to candle wax, when it's cold enough, they'll take it out of the mould, so then you have the sculpture actually in, made in wax, and then they take that wax sculpture and they invest that in sand, then they melt the wax out away, and then they replace the wax with bronze. So one of the reasons that I make sculpture uh, with a left orientation is that it'll maintain their, 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 their work and their characters in people's minds. Uh, that, that sculpture of Fenner Brockwood, well, uh, he was so very important in his time. Um, at every major uh, public meeting, um, 
be, be it CND or anything else. I mean, it was if it was left wing, he would be on the stage as a principal speaker right into his 90s. He was still being called on, but as soon as he's dead, he's uh, he would be forgotten. So. He did an enormous amount uh, during his time. He was a huge influence on me and my political attitudes. And it's one of the reasons that when I, f when I first decided that I was going to give my whole time to sculpture in 1981, uh, it, he was the first subject I wanted to make a sculpture of. I made it for very little money, but it was so important to me to get that figure up in a public place. Because if it's a bust, it usually goes indoors. But I like sculpture in the open. I think it uh, expresses powerfully then and it becomes the possession of, of everyone, you know, whether they like it or not. <laughs>